Hello there, so welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you haven't, hi, hello, Chloe is my name, and um, welcome to my video. So yeah, as you know, today I'm talking about probably one of the most brutal murders to ever happen um, in Irish history. And yeah, it's probably one of the most well-known Irish cases. And I'm just gonna go straight into it. So today's video is all about the Scissor Sisters. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of background information all about them. So the two sisters are Charlotte and Linda Mulhall. And I'll leave a photo for you here. Um, basically, they were two sisters from Talla in County Dublin. And Charlotte, I'll put in a photo of her here, um, was 22, well she was 21 and she was 22 the day after the murder. And this is Linda here and she was 30 at the time of the murder and she also has four children. They grew up in Talla with their mom Kathleen and their father, his name was John. and. They hadn't the best of bringing, um, Tala can be a bit of a hit and miss place, um, I, I don't really wanna, I don't have any bad feelings towards Tala or anything like that, so if you're from there, no hard feelings, um, but, um, it wasn't the best of bringing, basically. Charlotte had a bit of a rougher kind of lifestyle compared to Linda, um, Charlotte unfortunately got very much involved with drinking and drugs, and she even was brought into prostitution um, through her mom. So yeah, and Linda also, you know, she hadn't got the greatest life either. She had previous had a partner who had, she had the four children with and he was very abusive and um, he had an alcohol problem as well. And you know, she um, eventually she fell into a similar path of drinking drugs and unfortunately had her children taken off her by social services so you know she hadn't got the the best um, background either fortunately linda actually did get her children back just before the time of the murder so she was like getting back on track and she was like you know getting her life in order again so a couple of years beforehand her, their mother kathleen had broken up with their father john to um, go with Farah Swale Noor and he was a Kenyan immigrant and you know it was a bit of a hard situation for the girls it was kind of like they both loved their mom and dad so it was kind of an in-between situation they obviously supported their mom because that's what made her, made her happy but they are also still had a very good relationship with their dad. So in 2002 when Kathleen left John her and Farah moved to Cork just to start a new life for themselves but eventually they moved back into Dublin a couple of years later so they moved in to Richmond Cottages and um, just on the north side of Dublin city centre. Now Farah hadn't got the cleanest of pasts either he um, said that he had to flee from his home country he hadn't got time for a passport or anything like that he had seen his wife and children brutally murdered um, I think it was just his wife actually he'd apparently seen murdered and that he couldn't locate his children um, but unfortunately that wasn't the truth he was from Kenya and he had a wife and three kids at home he also had a very violent past and um, with reports of abuse sexual assault and you know he was very violent with Kathleen and it had been reported many times to the police um, he had broken her ribs a couple of times, he had severely abused her on many occasions so unfortunately he wasn't, he hadn't got the cleanest past as I said. So the day in question, it was March 20th, it was just coming up to Charlotte's 22nd birthday and you know she wanted to start the celebrations early so they were in their father John's house when you know Charlotte was like come on we'll have a few drinks. So Linda had her kids that day, so she was like, okay, I'll have one or two here with you, but that's it. Um, but eventually, you know, Charlotte kind of twisted Linda's arm. Her father offered to mind the children while they went out and had a good time for Charlotte's birthday. So they ended up drinking a little bit more and eventually they headed in towards Dublin city centre to meet Kathleen and Farah. 
Now, when they met, they were all quite intoxicated. And so they continued on drinking. Um, Farah went into a local shop and bought some vodka and the girls bought bottles of coke and eventually poured the vodka into the coke. They sat along the boardwalk in Dublin city centre. If you're familiar with Dublin, you probably do know the boardwalk. Um, it was kind of erected more for the Dublin city council for like visitors and you know tourists and all that but it's kind of become a key place for drug users and alcoholics and stuff like that to sit and use it for that reasons unfortunately. So Linda actually had a bag of ecstasy tablets on her at the time. She offered one to Charlotte and she took one herself and she they even offered Kathleen one and Kathleen again took it took one herself. So you can kind of see there the kind of relationship they had. It wouldn't be an everyday situation that you and your sister sit there and take ecstasy with your mom you know it's not really a normal situation um they did offer one to farah and he said no um the girls are then reported to say that they after a while of drinking and they they were all on a great buzz after a couple of drinks and taking the tablets and stuff but after a while the kind of mood started to change a little bit and farah started to argue with kathleen unfortunately so um they decided it was about time they moved on and you know headed home it was getting dark anyway so they headed towards uh, the cottage and they walked through O'Connell Street so as I mentioned as they were drinking more before they headed home they did also take a few more ecstasy tablets I just thought that would be some important information to know that they were highly intoxicated and very high on ecstasy um, when they returned home Kathleen um, actually spiked Farah's drink with an ecstasy tablet um, she's quoted as saying that she wanted him to feel the same high that her and the girls are feeling so she spiked his drink even though he had refused one previously and um, they were all highly highly intoxicated at this stage so as Richmond cottages were quite a small location they all kind of sat on the sofa um, Charlotte sat on Linda's lap and Farah sat beside them while Kathleen sat up on the side of the sofa so in their statements it was said that Farah tried to like come on to Linda and he had his arm around her waist or was like grabbing onto her waist and um, he had started to whisper things in her ear um, quite inappropriate things especially for your mother's boyfriend to say to you. Charlotte had said that she wasn't trying to make a scene so she said kind of nothing in the beginning but after a few minutes it was getting quite uncomfortable for the two of them so she told her to get told him to get off her sister to leave her alone um, and apparently he wouldn't loosen his grip and um, he kept whispering in her ear and you know really trying to put himself on her. Eventually Charlotte tried to pull the two of them apart and it wasn't happening so after a couple of minutes she eventually separated them. He then went for Kathleen unfortunately and Kathleen screamed for help and apparently she begged for the girls to kill him. So in this instance, um, unfortunately, Charlotte did grab a Stanley blade and slit his throat. Um, you know, I kind of think maybe if it had have finished there, if they hadn't continued on to what they do, um, they might have got away with an easier sentence. They might have, you know, got away with self-defense or something I'm not obviously I'm not a professional in any way shape or form when it comes to the law but um, I don't know they might have just got away a little bit lighter so after Charlotte slit his throat he stumbled into the bedroom where he hit his head Um, I've heard now different accounts of what happened Um, some accounts will say that Kathleen handed Linda a hammer and other accounts say that uh, Linda just grabbed the hammer herself so it's there's a lot of um, different situations in this case so um, I'm just trying to tell you both sides that I've heard um, and she hit him over the head anyway with a hammer Linda so she apparently um, she hit him a few times and knocked him out but he was well and surely dead by then but the girls didn't stop there they then dragged his dead body to the bathroom in the cottage and 
it was quite a tiny bathroom one stood in the shower and one sat on the toilet and from there they decided to dismember him and if you're not sure what dismember means it's basically they cut him up um charlotte also stabbed him 22 times um with a bread knife kathleen was also quoted saying please kill him before he kills me or something along them lines um basically she said something in the fact that if the girls didn't kill him he'd kill her again there's a lot of misinterpretation as to what actually happened and how it was decided he would be chopped up um, Linda said that Charlotte told her to start chopping them up whereas Charlotte said her mom said to chop them up so it's nobody really knows <laughs> so Charlotte started at his right leg and Linda took a hammer to keep smashing at his bones it's this is a really really vulgar uh, heinous crime and they it was really a vicious act um, it took them all of about eight hours in total to dismember Farah um, it, they cut off his arm his two arms his two legs they cut his torso in half they cut off his head and his penis Linda um, apparently was the one to remove his penis and said you'll never hurt my mom again um, as I said already he had um, sexually abused her and some other people as well after they chopped him up I know I shouldn't be laughing but you know um, the way it was carried out it was just like it was so casual you know and um, so after they dismembered him they then placed his body parts into black bin bags and put them into the bedroom they then spent about an hour and a half cleaning up the blood and everything um apparently it was all over the skirting boards the walls the floors the lino was stained um it had seeped out i think underneath the bathroom door onto the stairs and onto the carpet on the top of the stairs and stuff like that so it was a, as you can imagine it was a very very messy scene um it was though noted that the guards actually had to visit the scene three times before they actually decided it was the murder scene so the girls when they spent an hour and a half cleaning up they clearly did a very good job of cleaning it up it was then decided that they would dump his body in a local canal and the royal canal runs quite close to the uh, where Kathleen lived so they decided to dump the bodies there so that evening when it was quite dark um, some reports say it was the following morning, some reports say it was that evening, so um, from my opinion I think it could have been that evening because, you know, it was quieter probably in the evening time and if you don't want to be caught, like. Apparently Charlotte carried the torso and the heavier parts of the bodies while, um, or the body, not bodies, um, while Linda carried, you know, his limbs. So um, apparently they threw the body parts into the canal um, they didn't throw his head in with it or his penis um, it, nobody knows for sure actually where his um, penis or his head is located um, they, they've never been recovered um, so as I said they didn't leave the head with his body so he wouldn't be identified um, so they went actually to a park in Tala called Tymond Park and that is where they buried the body. Now the weirdest thing about this was the girls actually got on the bus and had his head in a black bag in a, like a duffel bag with them and carried the bag from their house to Tymond Park on a bus. So there were so many unsuspecting people on the bus with a head like a human head in someone's bag like that just freaks me out because imagine just sitting down beside someone and being like can you move your bag please and they're like moving a human head do you know what i mean like that's just crazy apparently they moved it and buried it in one of the little behind the bench a little bench there um but apparently because linda was feeling so guilty uh, a couple of days later uh, apparently she went back with her son's school bag put it in her son's school bag 
and moved it again and left it over near some trees and then apparently a couple of days later again <laughs> she moved it out to a field um, where apparently she smashed it up so it would be completely unidentifiable and I, uh, to be honest with you that probably seems like the most likely um, solution because she didn't want it to be identified and there's also been rumours that it was just thrown into a bin in Tymond Park or into a bin near the Phoenix Park as well and um, so nobody quite knows where the head is to be honest. Linda had become quite distraught and upset about it she then um, moved back on to drink and drugs knowing that probably eventually they would be caught and um, so she was crying a lot and um, you know she was drinking a lot and taking a lot of drugs so it was actually 10 days later when the body was discovered in the Royal Canal and um, a local man had passed by and he seen uh, some young guys you know, looking in, in the river and they were like oh we think there is um, a dummy or something in here and um, they kind of passed no remarks of it until he looked at it he seen it with a sock and he kind of got suspicious so he rang the police the police came straight out and um, that was kind of the end of it then there was divers sent in to retrieve the body parts and they weren't sure maybe whether it was just an elaborate hoax or whether it was a real body but they knew as soon as they took out the leg that it was obviously um, human remains. Anything is about it being in the water it kind of preserved it a little bit. Um, one thing that was quite strange because it was in the water I don't actually really know the sciencey terms behind it basically when the police or the guards whatever removed um, Farah's body they actually believed it was um, the body of a white man um, because all the mel melanin and pigment had actually drained from his skin um, because of being in the water or something like that. It wasn't until they actually removed the underpants that they noticed that um, he, he had black skin so they then realised he wasn't um, a white man. Um, which is just a bit crazy and um, they also believe that it could have been a ritual killing because of the removal of the penis apparently it's something to do with rit ritual killings um, I haven't looked into that or anything so I'm not 100% sure and um, because they thought it was a ritual killing they actually got in contact with some like African um, communities or something and they were like they didn't think there was any kind of plan for a ritual killing of the sorts um which sounds crazy <laughs> basically he had no identified factors he had no um he had no head so and then they didn't even think he was a black man they thought he was a white man um so uh, i don't mean to be racist in saying that either um god <laughs> I don't mean that in a, in a racist uh, way at all. They, they released what he was wearing that day. Uh, they put a photo up. He was wearing an Irish um, away football jersey. I'll put in a photo or something here. Basically, the photos of the jersey being released ended up being the reason he was identified. Um, a Somalian man came forward uh, who was also a friend of Farah's and said, look, uh, I seen him with that, with, that on him so it's possibly him and it was him um they also he had an ex-partner um who had a child um to him and the guards went about it and got dna and stuff off through the child to confirm it was him and the dna did confirm it was for us all i know so at the time of the murder two of kathleen's sons and Charlotte and Linda's uh, brothers were actually in prison for driving offences um, so when Kathleen went to visit them in prison she strangely told them what had happened and what um, they had done and it was actually the brothers that got in contact with the guards who said look we know something about um, that body that you found blah 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 and only for they were able to tell all the details um about him 
the, the guards kind of didn't really believe them. Um, so eventually then the two girls were arrested, Charlotte and Linda, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, I suppose, that someone paid for this crime. Um, they paid for what they did type of thing, it depends on what way you want to take it. Um, but actually Kathleen fled to England and um, she returned home five years later and ended up turning herself in kind of and ended up um, serving a one and a half year sentence for cleaning the crime scene. Linda was charged with manslaughter um, for 15 years and then Charlotte was done for murder. Yeah, so that's basically everything to this case. Um, obviously I can't provide every single bit of information when it comes to these cases so if i did miss out on some things um do feel free to leave them down below um and just know that i do i could know about that information i just maybe chose to leave it out for whatever reason or just didn't feel like it was completely important to explain this case um so yeah that is all really if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and it really really helps me out when you just give it a thumbs up because that's the way i know you are still enjoying these videos all my murder mysteries missing people cases um videos i've done too but they have received a really 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 positive feedback and i love it because i love doing these videos i love investigating for them it just is so so interesting to me so i love making them and i love getting the feedback from them so yeah thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you all next time bye